Don Marie Fleming, but I go by Mariam uh, right now as my Muslim name. Um, I come from a place called Stephenville, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Um, it's about 8,000 people. Uh, it's a nice little town. Um, my family, I have uh, three brothers and one sister. Um, I'm the only one in my family who is converted to Islam. Uh, my upbringing as uh, a Christian, um, we went to church um, special times, Christmas, uh, Easter. However, my father uh, would insist on every Sunday us going to church. As much as we sometimes fought going, we would, uh, we, we, we would still go. I did um, some volunteering. Um, they would have these programs at the church, um, the Christmas shoebox. Um, they would ask people to uh, buy things for, for the children and it had to be things that weren't, weren't too violent or like had nothing like guns or knives or like this. So it was more like uh, crayons, coloring books, uh, you know, stuff of that nature, candy, um, and we would put these boxes together and I was so happy to, to be able to put one of these together and to be able to present it to a, to a child but little did I know that they were shipping them up and sending them over to another country. Um, they also have these, um, with the Salvation Army, they would have these Christmas trees that you would go and you would pick uh, a name, um, well actually it wasn't even, it was a boy or a girl off a tree and it would have the age on it and you go and you buy them a gift and uh, and then after you bought, you present it back to the tree, and so we would do these like these little kinds of things, and it was nice. It, it made it, you know you just to, to give someone that um, just to be able to provide that sense of happiness for someone who couldn't really afford to buy that child uh, a gift on Christmas morning. It was it was a nice feeling. How would we celebrate Easter? Well, we would basically <laughs> my parents <laughs> at that time would uh, take. Easter eggs and um, and chocolates and stuff and they would put them all on a present them in a nice little arrangement on a couch and we would always be like told that oh yeah the Easter Bunny's coming in the morning you know like so we were it got us excited especially even um, I remember one time <laughs> one time we were we had just come back from uh, living in Ontario and we were living back in Stephenville Newfoundland and I remember we were living with my aunt and it was Easter time and um, my aunt had all these nice Easter eggs and all these toys and everything for my cousin because he was a little bit younger than me. And I remember like I looked at what he had and what I had and I'm like, no, 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 no. And I took from, from his Easter things and I put it to, <laughs> to mine and, uh, and then I went back to bed. And then in the morning when I got up, I'm like, wait a second, how did that get back there? I wouldn't put that there. And my aunt said, oh, so you did that. <laughs> so it was, and then I guess, well, at that point I didn't believe in the Easter Bunny after that, but it was, that's the kind of things that were associated with, uh, with holidays such as Easter. Yes, I always have believed in God. Um, however, um, growing up in, in such a place where, as Newfoundland, um, that was kind of uh, instilled in us that that the belief of God was there. Um, in terms of um, uh, did I believe in the the essence of Jesus being uh, the Son of God? No, I never believed in that. And I remember in in high school, I would always get in in trouble and fights with my uh, religion teacher about this uh, about this matter. Um, my relationship with the Bible, uh, growing up I remember um, being, um, I enjoyed the stories of, uh, that was being told to us about Nabi Noah, well, or, or Prophet Noah, um, the story of Jesus, um, you know, how, how Mary would come with Joseph on a, on a donkey and they would have, go to a manger and she would give birth to Jesus. But uh, I remember also coming across a, a letter, a report card um, my mother had um, when I was in grade two or three, and it said on to it that Dom Marie was always very um, joyful, uh, very um, intent of uh, listening to uh, the religious program, uh, the stories. 
So it was, I, I, I did like those, those kinds of things. If the daily prayers were important to me, uh, I would say that they were more important now, but at that time, um, uh, the prayers, I would always say my prayers before I go to sleep. Um, when there was a, if I, if, what I'd say, if I needed something, uh, I would always say uh, the St. Jude Novena, uh, or it was the prayer of St. Anne, we, we would we would say these prayers, those prayers were kind of uh, in, in doctrine into us kind of thing from my dad. Um, what did I think of Islam before converting? I really didn't know too much about Islam. Um, I didn't even realize that we even had Muslims living in, in Newfoundland um, until, until after I converted to Islam. Uh, I didn't meet any Muslims right away that sparked my interest in Islam. Uh, it w a funny thing that happened was, was that I was a nanny in Montreal. That's what brought me to Montreal. Um, I had a friend from Nova Scotia who was also a nanny. We were sitting in the metro and I remember just looking and looking at her and I'm like, yo, Jay, I'm like, there's a lot of Muslims here. No, I'm Muslim, sorry. <laughs> there's a lot of nuns here <laughs> in Montreal. And she's like, Dawn, they're not, Dawn, they're not nuns, they're Muslims. And I'm like, what's a Muslim? She's like, oh, you know, they're the ones, she said, that's always covered up. She said, when it rains, she said, they're all running out of the, out of the weather, you know? And I started to laugh and I'm like, okay, like, so that kind of like, I, I didn't know. I said, like, like, they're dressed like nuns. And it's so funny because I even got, I even got referred to as the flying nun at home because I'm the only one with, I guess, that wears a baya. But um, yeah, that was it, that kind of sparked it right there from that. I was very curious about why why they looked a lot so much like nuns. Um, but it wasn't really after um, that I had my daughter that um, I really wanted to know more about Islam because before I didn't want to know anything about Islam. It was. Uh, it was kind of the thing that um, my husband at that time uh, was trying to get me to talk to these people about Islam, and I'm like, you know, okay, you have your religion, I have mine, you know, lakum dinakum waliyadin kind of thing. And um, it was just, it <clears throat> sorry, it was just really funny how even that, uh, that whole incident came about. Um, he had me talking to these, to these Muslims from Syria. And after, I'm like, oh, I, you know, I, I no, I'm not, not going to be Muslim. Um, when I did decide, it was because of my daughter. Um, I was sitting down <clears throat> and I was thinking, like, I have this baby now. And I have to be a role model for her. I have to do something, at least I have to do something good to show her that I can be a good person. Um, so I, I went searching then, and I went, I remember speaking to a nun, and I said to her, you know, like, I'm, I'm confused, I, I really don't know what to do, and, and she's like, well, what's to be confused about? I said, you know, like, I don't know if I should raise my daughter as Christian or as Muslim, and so she said, so she's like, um, so do you go to church? I'm like, well, um, I go when I have to. And she's like, well, what about your husband? I said, yeah, he prays and he goes to mosque and, you know, he, he attends um, functions as a Muslim. And she's like, well, he's better than you. So she said, maybe you need to consider raising your daughter as a Muslim. And I'm like, hmm. I said, I found this strange coming from a nun. So I thought, okay, you know, so a couple of days later, I had an appointment with the doctor and it just happened that he's a Muslim doctor. And uh, I, when I said to him, I said, Salaam Alaikum. He's like, Alaikum Salaam. Um, he said to me, I said, uh, you're Dr. Ghani. I said, you're Muslim, right? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, aren't you Muslim? I'm like, no. He said, uh, yeah, I'm Muslim. I said, well, I'm just curious because, you know, I went to the library and I went looking for some books on Islam. He said, you're not going to find no books on Islam in Newfoundland. He's like, come. He said to my office, I have lots of books. He said, if you want to look. So I grabbed, he gave him a Quran and I grabbed some other little books, but the Quran was the one that I kind of, I took uh, hold of. And when I opened it up, I opened it up to Surat Maryam. 
And I started to read the story about Isa, Nabi Isa, and the story of Jesus. And, um, and I re remember feeling how, like, this is totally different the way that, as a Christian, we believed how, how Nabi Isa is. And I'm thinking, like, this is more respectful of, of um, Maryam, the mother of Isa, the mother of Jesus. And as I kept write, reading it, I said, you know what? I'm going to take the name of Maryam as my, as my name. Because my middle name is Murray, which is, it's like Maryam. So I thought, okay, well, this is, this is a good name. First, I thought, okay, Fajr. No, I'm like, Fajr is like the prayer, so, which is still good. But I said, no, I said, Maryam is a more, it's a, she's one of the four women of uh, paradise. So I thought that this would be a, a good name. So how I would compare uh, Lady Miriam in the Holy Bible to Islam, um, I, I didn't find it um, that the story of, of Miriam in the Bible was, um, it, it was just totally different how they depict Miriam uh, in the Bible. When they say that she rode in on a donkey with uh, Joseph and they went and laid in a manger full of animals and and she gave birth in, in a manger. Okay, how, how they depicted um, Maryam uh, riding in on a donkey with uh, Joseph and her giving birth into a stable surrounded by animals. I just didn't find that to be of what a prophet uh, would be born into. But how they did it in Islam, saying how Maryam was, um, she was told to go and sit and she was leaning up against a tree and told to that like, she wanted to eat and how she was told after um so she ate the dates and how she was told after to be able to <clears throat> don't don't ask me speak speak to him i just find that so different compared to how i was taught i didn't know that uh that jesus spoke from the cradle I thought that Jesus spoke well, like any other normal child, and they depict him as being a normal child in the Bible, which he, which he's not. He's he's considered to be revered as something more high in Islam, and I didn't th I didn't think about that. And even the mother of Jesus, Miriam, how she's considered to be one of the four women of paradise, that in itself is like, it's 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 such a, it's an honor. To, to, to be able to be held in that position. It, it's a real honor. And even if you compare her now, um, you know, the, how, how they say, oh, like, why Muslim women dress like this or they dress like that. Well, look at your, at Maryam. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at Maryam, the way that she is dressed. How can, how can you say that women are being disrespected and oppressed in Islam when you yourself look at Maryam and she's dressed in full garb, what did my family think of my reversion? Um, they were not very receptive of it in the beginning. Um, and still till now, they still have some, some difficulties accepting me being Muslim. I think it's more because of, of who I used to be. I still think I'm, I'm the fun caregiving person, and I'll help at any cost, at anything. And I'm always there. I, I, I would like to think of myself as being generous. Um, I, I maybe, I'm not as generous as Ahl Bayt, but I'm, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm becoming more generous, more patient, alhamdulillah. Um, my family did see a difference in me when I convert to Islam. Uh, my sister always notes to me, she said, no, 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 you, 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 were, you were like flying by the, by the seat of your pants um, before, but now I see a difference in you. You're, you are more calm, and you look like you're headed to a better place, and you are in a better place than what you were before you became Muslim. And I, I thought that that was, that was nice, you know, like that she noted, she's seen that in me. And even my own family, like they, you know, they always make this... Um, this reference to, uh, you know, oh, foreigners, look at, the, look at those foreigners. I'm like, hey, what are you talking about? Like, I'm, I'm just like that. Yeah, well, that's not, 
that's not your, that's not really your religion. I'm like, what do you mean? That's not my, this is my religion. This is who I am now. I'm alhamdulillah, I'm very happy to be, to be who I am. And being a Muslim is, is something to be honored, I, I believe. <sighs> my first year as a Muslim, well, alhamdulillah, it was, it was bittersweet, I should say. Um, I was very um, happy to be able to be introduced to Islam. Um, the first time that I actually went to a mosque was during the month of Muharram. And uh, the friend of mine, she loaned me a hijab. And I was very honored at that time to, to put it. I was so excited. And um, when I went to the mosque, I looked around and I'm like, I'm the only one here wearing a white hijab. And everybody else is wearing black. But I wasn't really told the story of Imam Hussein. Right, so. Um, at that time, and I remember sitting in the mosque, and everybody all of a sudden, I don't know what the sheikh is saying, but he's talking, and everybody is hitting themselves and screaming and crying. And I'm like, oh my God, what did he say? Like, what happened? Did somebody die? Like, I was just, I, I, I really wasn't informed well on the, on the story of, what, of Muharram and the Ashura. Um, but I felt very welcomed uh, into the masjid of Ahl Bayt. Alhamdulillah. I believe yeah, they are now. Um, the message is starting to get out. Uh, that uh, the message of Imam Hussein. Um, I believe that we are doing a better job than what we were before. Um, I think the fact that uh, they're putting signs in UK, um, who is Hussein? The fact that we are having now Ansar Day here in Montreal and in Toronto. Um, it is, it, the message is getting out. You know, the fact that um, a group of um, brothers and sisters went to the hospital here in St. Justine and the Montreal General, and they were handing out flowers and giving them on behalf of the Ansars of Imam Hussein. And people were so curious as to wonder who, like, who is this? Who, who is this man, this revered man that you keep talking about, Imam Hussein? And people were there explaining it, and they were telling me I was like feeling so uplifted by. I said I wish I could have went, and they're like, "Why you didn't come?" I said because I don't speak French that well to be able to converse with them. But I said the fact that they felt so honored to get this rose, that they're they're not just nurses and and janitors. You know, they are like the Ansar themselves. They're out there helping in the community helping those that need that type of help. And to be honored and say thank you for the good work you do, I think that in itself, that's, that's a big dawah from Islam right there, from us. What made me follow the path of Ahl al-Bayt? Um, I remember reading Hadith Kisa, and I remember how beautiful uh, this Hadith is. Um, they talked about how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he invited Imam Ali Sallam, Fatima Zahra Ali Sallam, uh, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein Sallam, and Angel Gabriel was also invited to come in underneath a cloak. And I thought there has to be something so special about these five people that I need, I need to find out more about what, who they are, who are these revered people that they keep talking about. Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam Ali, Fatima Zahra, Prophet Muhammad. We know about Prophet Muhammad, alhamdulillah. But alhamdulillah, like they, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's so nice how these five were all put underneath the cloak and saying that, how, and how the special they are to the world. And that we, alhamdulillah, that we are so honored to be following under the, the, the Shia, Alhamdulillah. I did have the blessed opportunity to go to Karbala and it was experience that inshallah I will never forget. I was invited by the Imam Hussein Foundation with the, the blessed fortune um, event of uh, being able to go and I remember uh, stepping foot in Najaf and I could not believe how that I was even there. And the whole time when I was going, I remember, um, I, I just I, I just couldn't believe it. Like, I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I'm here. It's, it's just, it's not, it's not a feeling 
that anybody can really describe. But then when you're there and like you're you're sitting, you're not even sitting, you're just you're approaching the doors of, of Imam Hussein's masjid. And you're like, you keep he hearing all these stories about people telling you, oh yeah, you have to go, you have to go. And and I'm like, it's it seems so surreal. It was just a, such a surreal experience. But it wasn't until I stood in the same place where Lady Zainab, salam, where she stood. And they were saying that this is the place where she stood. And yelled out and said, are there any helpers to help my brother? And there was nobody left. I, I, I dropped on my knees and I started to cry. It was such a nice feeling. And I remember how warm the people of Karbala were and how inviting they were. And they're always asking you, Come, come, have yalla, ta'ai, you know, they were saying, come, chai, you know, chai. And it, it was such a nice feeling. And I swear, the, the day that I got on that plane to leave, I was crying the whole way in the, in the, in the, air, in the, the cab, going back. I'm like, I don't want to leave. I really don't, I feel like, you know how they say you left your heart in San Francisco? I really, I left my heart in Karbala the day I got on that plane to come back to Montreal. It was such a feeling that I could not even explain. I really couldn't explain. It's, if I didn't have family here, I, I would have left everything and just stayed in Karbala. I don't know how I would have lived, but inshallah, I, I, I would have managed, I think. But just, just the warmth of the people and how open and and beautiful the city is it was it's just an undescribable feeling really undescribable yes i have experienced racism since i became muslim um i converted to islam in uh, i would say 2000 it's, my journey started in 1999 um i took a year to learn about islam and shortly after um in 2000, June of 2001, I put hijab. And of course, we all know what happened back then. 9-11 um, had happened. Um, it was a very emotional time for a lot of people. Um, it was the first time that I had ever in my life experienced any kind of racism. Even being from Newfoundland, um, it was not something I was accustomed to. I remember being on the bus and going home that day, and I remember um, how I was hearing the word terrorist being thrown, and I'm thinking like, terrorist, like where's the, <laughs> where's the terrorist, you know, like, and I didn't realize it's, it's I'm, they were talking to me, they were talking about me, I'm the terrorist. But I, I kind of let that one, I, I kind of tried to let that go. But it wasn't really what affected me until I went I was getting a movie one night and there was two little kids and I remember how the little kids were like ah, hi terrorist terrorist they're like this and I'm like they're just little kids I, I wanted to like just to, okay yellow go away you know kind of thing but you know they're they're just kids they're innocent um, and then it wasn't until after like the little boy he came and he's like mama mama terrorist terrorist and the mother came and I looked at her, I'm like, you know, what are you teaching your kids? Like, this is not, this is not what you're supposed to teach your kids to hate. But if you can teach your kids to hate, you can teach your kids to love. That's the way I see it. But at the same time, having this happen to me, on the other side of it, I was in IGA, in the grocery store. And as I was coming out, this man passed by me. And he looked at me, he smiled. I said, hi, how you doing? And I walked out the door. And as I was walking out, he turned, he's like, madam, madam. And I turned around, I said, yes. He said, can I tell you something? I said, uh, yeah. He's like, you know, it's the first time a Muslim woman has ever smiled at me. And I thought, what? 
I said to him, like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. He said, usually when I see Muslim women, they have this very drawn, sad look on their face. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I said, like, you don't know me, obviously. I said, he said, but you, you must have, you became, you weren't born Muslim, right? I said, alhamdulillah. I said, I convert to Islam. But I said, you know what? I said, you're not meeting the right ones. I said, because not all women are like this. All, you know, we're, we're very nice and gentle people and we like to, you know, smile at people and sometimes, you know, maybe some people have things going on in their life. But still, you know, the best thing to do is smile. It's a form of charity. This is, even Islam says this. So at that time, he said to me, you know what? I want to tell you, he said, you know what? Just because you did, he said, you really changed my perspective about this, about women in Islam. He said, I thought they were oppressed, and I thought, you know, like, like they were very, up, you know, just being very sad all the time. I said, no, no, no. I said, what? what? We're not aliens, you know, like we're, we're like anybody else. We, we, you know, we were happy. We like to smile at people. He's like, wow. He's like, this, this really changed my, my outlook on, on Muslims. The best advice that I can give to anybody considering Islam or even converting to Islam is the fact that you know what, we were all, I myself was closed-minded. I thought in one way, I thought, I didn't think that my way was the best way. But I thought something different. I thought that, um, that Islam is something, it was something different. There was something about the people, how they, even as families, how they come together as, as a big family. It's, it's, it's beautiful, it's a nice feeling. But at the same time, I, I wanted, I was looking for something in my life and Islam fulfilled that, that feeling for me. What I really want to, to advise people is that don't be closed-minded. If you have that feeling, go and search. Because once you do, you're going to find a whole different world. You're going to find people, beautiful people that you never thought you would ever meet before in your life. People that will welcome you as family, as real family into your home. And when I say home, I mean into the masjid. You're gonna get that, you're gonna get that people that will always, you know, they have that one mindset, you know, the, you know, the visor's on like the horse and you lead them. But you can't, you have to go, you have to go not to just one masjid, go to other masjid and get to know the people. Go in, say salam alaikum. Even just if you're looking, you're just curious about Islam and you want to go, just go. It, it'll, it will change your whole outlook, whole outlook on, on Muslims and Islam. The best message that I can give to Muslims is that you know what Islam represents. You know that Islam is the best and the true the true religion and you know that by following Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he is the best example for all of us in the world you can't let people tell you oh this is this is this this is that and what I mean by that it's don't let people tell you that oh if you do this if you do something haram it's going to bring you halal it's not going to bring you anything but pain and and lies and all I can say to them is that trust Prophet Muhammad وسلم, He is the best example for all of us. And we have to follow that. We have to follow his, his true path, what he wanted for us. And what he wants is the best for all Muslims. Not to be treated in a bad way, not to treat others in a bad way. They say in Islam there's no compulsion in religion. So how can we as Muslims go out there and commit heinous acts of violence and crimes against Muslims, against non-Muslims? This goes totally against Islam. Our own, our own governments are not acting properly in terms of lots of things, even Muslim governments. But don't let that ruin the whole essence of what Islam is. Islam is pure. Islam has the love and has the beauty and has the ahlubi.